Hello again, it's Brian. I'm here by myself this time. Melissa is not with me because it's her birthday and she's having a spa day. One of the nice things about being truck drivers, making your own schedules and uh, choosing your loads with FedEx is when you have home time, enjoy the home time. So Melissa's at the spa. She's having a spa day today. And I'm at home making some videos before we hit out on the road for another couple thousand miles of loads we got booked already. Uh, we're able to book those future loads out thanks to the load board that FedEx provides. And some of the tips and tricks and things I've learned to stay ahead of whatever your current load is. You can't always do that. I wish you could but you can usually stay two or three loads booked out. I'm gonna share some tips and tricks with you on how I've learned how to do that. Uh, like I said, you can't always be booked out that far. Sometimes you can be booked out five loads. I wouldn't recommend five loads just in case one cancels, but being booked out two to three loads is super beneficial. Uh, you stay busier, you're less stressed about downtime or being stuck somewhere, and of course you make more money that way. So I'm going to switch over here shortly to a screen recording on my computer. That way I can show you more close up how to navigate FedEx's load board. Um, everything can be done on your cell phone. Um, and I'm going to demonstrate that, though, using my computer and the little arrow for the mouse so that you can kind of see what I'm doing. Hopefully the video comes out better that way. And hopefully the things I have to share will help you, especially new drivers, being new to FedEx, uh, being new here with us at exam. You want to get started and you want to start making money. That's why we're all here, of course. So. Uh, without further ado, let's jump into screen recording on my computer and see what I can share with you. And welcome to the Owner Operator Extranet. If you are with FedEx Custom Critical, you should already have a login into the Extranet. The website is oo.blue.fedex.com. Put your login credentials in and you get to this home page. Hopefully you've already seen this. Quick shout out first to exam. Exam multi-year award winning elite fleet. We are super grateful, my wife and I, to exam for the great equipment that they have. And we highly recommend exam if you're not already with them. Call a recruiter and come see what they're all about. We are in our 12th going on 13th month now. And we have zero complaints. Now we're making videos. So hope this helps you out. On the extranet, first thing I want to talk about, I've been surprised how many drivers don't know. And we didn't know this in the very beginning. The VRU map is right here. VRU map. And voila. If you remember when wondering how to get to certain people, at FedEx because there's a million different options. <laughs> this is the main menu down the left side and where each one of those takes you uh, when you press one, two, three, etc. cetera. Um, one of the tips that I have for you right off the bat, when you hit accept on a load, uh, wait 10 minutes from the moment you hit accept, wait 10 minutes and you can call into the VRU Press 1 to speak to dispatch. Press 3 to speak to load opportunities. This is taking you directly to a dispatcher. It's going to ask you uh, to press 1 if it's temperature controlled or 2 if it's not. And then it'll connect you to a dispatcher and you can ask questions about that load. You can check to see if you've got the load. Sometimes you can ask them, push them through, push the load through. And I've heard of some people who have had a success negotiating loads um, to get a higher uh, mileage rate for it. If you're attempting to do that, that's also how you get to the dispatcher to 
discuss those types of things. So know your VRU map. You don't need to memorize it. I have to cheat off of this all the time. But one, three, and one or two, I do a lot. Uh, I always call in to push my loads through after 10 minutes when I'm first on the list. Uh, you don't have to do that. They'll usually push the load to you uh, within 20 to 30 minutes. But if you're a little bit anxious like I am to make sure you got that load, feel free to call, but wait 10 minutes to do so. Back to the home page here on the extranet. Um, another trick, another tip, something you need to make sure that you have done on your settings is go to load board go up here to the menu go up here to preferences click on preferences and max out these sliders this is what's going to send you those text messages for loads that are coming out they're always future loads you want to max it even if you think oh i don't want to see something 1500 miles deadhead away from me well, it might be sending you a load that's available four or five days from now, and you might end up being over there. So max these scales out. Make sure you're getting the text messages. Make sure your contact info is set. Um, and if you want to get an email to you, you can click on both. I just have it texted to me. So max out that scale and save your preferences. Now you'll be getting all the future loads possible that are out there. Uh, you want to be watching those um, and keeping note of those, saving those in your messages. I go through and delete my old messages and save future loads in my text messages. So I'd recommend that. Uh, it's definitely helpful. Um, another trick right off the bat here is let's go to load board. I did not know this in the very beginning. <laughs> Maybe some of you are watching this who did know long before I did, but nobody showed me. Scroll all the way to the bottom of your load board. You see this little dot right here? This gray dot and this purple dot? Well, it's pretty hard to hit it with your finger on your cell phone, but go ahead and see if you can. Hit that little gray dot and boom. FCC loads. These are FedEx custom critical loads. None of this is going to be refrigerated. Uh, I don't know if Canada shows up on here or not. I don't think it does. But this is going to be mostly just basic freight loads. But a really good tip to use this load board, the FCC load board. Use this load board to get you to better areas. If you go to somewhere and there's not a lot of action, or you go somewhere and the loads are all kind of short and you're really wanting to get somewhere uh, further or possibly somewhere better when it comes to load opportunities, jump on this FCC load board and see if somewhere, uh, something close to you can get you somewhere better. Um, because these are general freight loads, they usually go to more of the popular areas. I have used this load board multiple times to get us out of Texas. Uh, Texas can be hard to get out of with refrigerated. At least we've had that issue. Um, you can see there's some Texas, Houston, El Paso. Salt Lake can be hard to get out of. There's the Salt Lake. So again, if, if you feel like you're in a sticky area and you've only been using the white glove load board or all you knew about was the white glove load board well now you know a really good tip and trick i wish i had known it earlier so i really hope it helps you out uh, back to the white glove load board that's what this means if you didn't know wg loads that's going to be your hazmat your temp your t-val tsa and canada uh, loads are all going to be showing up here um, just to run over a couple things on this, if you weren't already aware, if you are in a D truck, D is in Delta, you can take C loads. So a D truck means you have double rear axles. It means you can carry more weight 
than a C truck. A C truck's only going to have a single rear axle, and that would not be one that has a drop down. So they're restricted to how much weight they can carry. So they cannot take a D load. A C truck cannot take a D truck load, but a D truck can take a C truck load. So if you're in a D truck, don't think you can't take C's because you can. Sometimes the pay is just a little tiny bit less. And sometimes it's actually not any different at all. So I take C truck loads all day long. Hopefully if someone listening with a C truck, that doesn't make them mad. But that is the industry. Find a fleet owner with a D truck. If you are in a C truck, call exam. I believe they only have D trucks. Anyway, a couple other things to know. If you don't know already, the red triangle here, that's a hazmat load, just for a quick reference. The blue thermometer is a temperature load. The orange is a T-Val load. That means it's going to be driver secure, and you are going to need to drive the first 200 miles without stopping. And that also means it's going to have some really good pay attached to it. If a load has a green check mark by it right here, a green check mark means that that load is committed. So FedEx has guaranteed the shipper that they're going to get a truck there. If it's got a green check mark by it and it's been on the load board for a while, this is a good load that you'd probably want to try to negotiate some freight on and see if you can get them to pay you more on it because this green check marks means FedEx is basically guaranteeing they're going to get a truck there. So these are your negotiating power loads when they have a green check by them. If you're trying to negotiate on a load that's further out, like three, four days picking up, don't be surprised if the dispatcher tells you, sorry, we're not working on that right now. Typically, they only want to negotiate higher rates on loads within 24 hours of pickup. So do note that don't feel like you're a horrible negotiator because you can never get them to go up on the price of the mileage. Um, I would say for every 10 loads I book, I'm only getting maybe one or two of those negotiated higher. Usually the T-Val rate and the amount of trucks in the area, I just take what I can get and I keep the wheels turning. So that's a couple little things to know there. Oh, and the arrow, sorry, last thing, the arrow, that means lift gate. Hopefully you can see that. The arrow up, that means lift gate. So when you are looking at the load board for quick reference, click on the plus symbol right there. Click on your either current location and your current location. I'm in Lehigh, Utah. It's going to order loads by pickup date, PU pickup date closest to me. And if I uncheck it, it's going to be strictly by pickup date and it's going to be all over the place. So. I'm wanting to look off of deadhead miles and not just pickup date. So Lehigh, Utah, deadhead, the HPU closest to me, deadhead pickup. Uh, right now, St. Louis, Missouri, and going out from there. If I already have two or three booked out like we do, um, I'm not going to be able to look out much further than this load. This is going to be, oh, and by the way, this is your delivery date. It gives you a nice little uh, cheat sheet here. We're delivering in New York on 626 at 0800 hours. So I'm not going to be able to see past five days here on the load board yet, but two or three days from now, you better believe I'll be checking in, watching, and keeping a close eye on my text messages or something near East Green, in New York, so that I'm still stacked three loads out. I prefer to be two to three loads out. My wife has a little more faith than me that we will get something no matter where we are. I'm kind of a, a stressor or a prepper, and I like to always be looking two or three out. 
or being booked two or three out. Um, on that note, if you go back to this menu and you go to your elite fleet, this is your 30, 60, 90 day numbers. And that plays into, if you go to offer activity, offer activity will be any loads you've hit accept on. They'll all be listed here. Um, if they're still being reviewed or not, we've been dispatched on this, but let's click on view truck rank. So when we were, when all of us were hitting accept, the seven trucks that all hit accept on this load, we were 81 miles out from it based on our delivery to when this one uh, posted for pickup. So we scored really big with where we were. You can see we were significantly closer than any of the other trucks. But you can see that some of these other trucks have a higher 30, 60, 90 day load counts than us. Um, this is totally up to you to see what works out best for you. Uh, you know, some people say less loads, higher, higher mileage, higher pay is what they prefer. And some people you can see are all about the load count. So these people are probably not taking only the highest paying loads. They're probably taking just about anything they can get, or maybe they stick it to a certain area because these are some really nice load counts. 12s, 11s, uh, low 20s, and low 30s on the 60, 30, 60, 90. Um, but, you know, sometimes less is more and sometimes more is more. I'm not going to tell you which one's better, but if you see our load, 7, 13, 16 averages, I can tell you that we typically run the longer loads. So, on average, our loads are about 1,800 miles each. Um, we are typically running two to three loads a week, and they're all very high mileage loads. Again, I'm not going to say which one's better or which one's worse. Everyone will figure out what works out best for them. And sometimes it just depends on where you are. So if you're in Kentucky and you're staying close in Kentucky, then you're going to be getting a bunch of loads, but they're all going to be shorter distance loads. So you decide what works out best for you. That's what your 30, 60, 90 is, is your load counts for the one, two, and three months. When you are looking at that also, before I leave this page, Inside of 100 miles DHPU, uh, it's going to be a tiebreaker. So if two trucks, if the first and the second truck, if I was 81 miles and this guy was 89 miles, this truck right here would have got the load because they had 11 load counts for the 30 day and I had seven. So if we were both under 100 miles, sorry, not 400, 100 miles, then it's going to go to the tiebreaker on the 30. If that's a tie, it's going to go to the 60. If that's a tie, it's going to go to the 90. And it's very rarely ever a tie. So again, to simplify that, if two or three trucks are all under 100 miles DHPU, your 30, 60, 90 is going to be your tiebreaker to decide who gets the load. After 100 miles, it's going to go to whoever's the closest. So if us, us and this truck didn't exist, and three through seven trucks were the people who hit accept, this truck at 530 DHBU deadhead miles, they would get the load because they're the closest. So that is how that works out. Um, another thing to uh, consider looking at is um, in your offer activity, you can click accept on more than one load. So if the load board is going crazy, if it's blowing up, if there's tons of loads posting and it's like, yes, I can get this one and yes, I can get this one and this one and which one's better for me. Well, don't don't worry about picking just click on them and click accept on all of them um you don't need to 
wait around and fear losing a possible load. Well, you know, if it's if it's a if it's a lower paying load, like wherever that seven hundred dollar one went, then you might not want to click on that one. But if it's a higher paying load, um, you know, click on that one and click on several others too. If you want to see the status because the load board was blowing up that day, go to that menu and go to offer activity and boom, 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 boom. They'll be listed all the way down. You can watch what's happening with the rankings. You can watch where different trucks are coming in. Uh, you can see who's in the area. This is another good tip and trick. I highly recommend paying really close attention to this um, offer activity page or in the menu. I will note, let's say I clicked on this, and let's say we were not this truck. We were not this one. Let's say we were truck number five. Well, this tells me that there's one, two, three, four trucks all within the same area, you know, relatively as me. So if another rock and load for five, six grand pops up, well, unfortunately, I know I probably might not get it because this this number two truck's going to click accept on the next one also. But but that's OK. Just pay attention to how many trucks are in your area and how close they are. And again, remember, if, if you're going to keep getting beat out, if there's too many trucks in your area, go to load board. And go down to FCC loads. It's there's no, there's nothing wrong with taking a dollar fifty to barely two dollar a mile load to get somewhere better. So if if you're fighting it out with other trucks in a certain area, I don't waste my time. I just look for something to get me somewhere else. Of course, I'm not gonna take Illinois and go to Denver, Colorado. But if I'm stuck in Denver, Colorado, I might use this to get out of Denver, Colorado. So. There are some hard areas to go to. A lot of freight goes in, not a lot of freight goes out. Uh, you'll kind of learn that as you go and, and take notes on that. Uh, I highly recommend taking notes on areas you've gotten stuck in. Um, Nebraska can be difficult. Um, typically, Nebraska loads are going to be baseball loads this time of year. Uh, if it says in the notes, this one doesn't. But the baseball loads uh, for the minor league baseball, um, they usually pay about $2.20 to $2.50 a mile. And they're pretty quick trips, and they're good to get you out of an area. So if I've ever gone to Nebraska and it's summertime, you better believe I'm taking a baseball load to get out of there. Um, if there's any other tips, let me look at my notes here. Um, offer activity, I went over 100 miles, uh, C trucks, D trucks, VRU map, set your preferences, wait 10 minutes to call, and just stay ahead, stay ahead of your, uh, of where you're at. Um, this, this load from Salt Lake City, oh, I should show you that. If you're on your, my schedule, click on your pro number. Quick synopsis of where you're going. This Salt Lake load, because we were home for my wife's birthday, we grabbed this one on the 20th going out. I typically do not like to go to Las Vegas. I very rarely see stuff leaving Las Vegas. But I was on the FCC board, and I saw that Riverside had a load the same day picking up in the evening time, uh, here, 20, 20 hours at, uh, let's see, so same day, and basically uh, I've got about a, f what, four-hour deadhead to pick up in the evening in Riverside and run 600 miles back to Salt Lake City because this load was on the FCC board. So what I'm trying to say is... I only took Salt Lake City to Las Vegas because I saw Riverside back to Salt Lake. And because I take notes all the time, I knew that Logan, Utah would be popping up soon. 
So I played my cards right. I took this load. Then I booked this right after. Then two days later, Logan popped up and we were 81 miles out from it and got it. So take notes, pay attention, learn how to play the system. Hopefully some of this helps you out. And I'm sure that I forgot a couple things. Hopefully I gave you some tricks that you didn't already know or that you're going to be wishing you had known sooner. Like I said, I sure wish I knew about finding the FCC load board sooner. Uh, Like I said in the video uh, earlier, the load board only lets you see five days out. But there are text messages that are seven days, eight days, and ten days out. So be organized with your cell phone text messages. Save those messages and reference those when you get another load booked and, and you're going somewhere else. So best of luck to you. I hope I've shared some tips and tricks. I hope you're uh, going to have fun or you are having fun out there. It's always a journey. Sometimes it's more stressful than others. Some loads are super easy money. $3 a mile, $4 a mile. And sometimes it's only $1.50 a mile. That's pretty rare, but it happens. So stay positive, keep learning, keep driving, and keep having fun out there. See you in the next video. Bye.